gather today. Uh, we, it's our pleasure to have Donna Charette. Uh, she and I have worked um, with the Habitat Project uh, a couple of times. One of the most significant for me was at the Philly Flower Show, um, where she did a residency during um, our time with the Hudson Valley Seed Library. In fact, she did a, uh, was one of the artists that that year did a um, seed packet for forage. Um, so that's on the desk there. So there's these nice kind of overlays of uh, my work with different artists, which uh, then gives me an opportunity to ask them to show what they actually do in their own work. So here she is, um, live in Guildford. And uh, I want her to talk a little bit about what's her uh, inspiration for her work and also the applied methodology. So what I'll do is just give you a, I'll just give you a brief rundown because we're looking here at, you know, a couple decades of work um, and, and uh, you know, a long time of uh, research into the work. So um, I invite you to ask any questions, uh, should there be, I and mean, there will be plenty of blanks to fill in. <laughs> so I'll tell you how I started. Um, I have a degree in painting from School of Visual Arts. I, I wanted to be an artist um, from, my mother said, from the time I could um, carry, do two things, carry the pencil and crawl across the floor. So, or the crayons, as it were, so, and, and mark up all the walls. Um, I eventually went, um, got accepted and went to School of Visual Arts, and I, I really wanted to be a painter. I felt that that was heroic. Um, all the women in my family were needleworkers, and I just, <laughs> saw no value to that at all. <laughs> I really wanted to be this heroic painter. Um, so my grandmother was one of, uh, I think it was 13 children that lived, um, one boy and all the rest girls, and each girl did a different type of needlework. So I do know how to do everything except tatting, and, um, and which is, uh, I did get a class a couple years ago, I taught a class down in Penland, um, which is a craft school, and I found someone in the mountains that knew how to do tatting, and I. Um, basically kidnapped her and brought her to my class and had her teach <laughs> the students. Um, and one young uh, college um, girl that was in my class, she actually really fell in love with it and, and took it up. So the woman felt very, she was just so moved by that because a lot of these um, crafts are being lost. Um, these people aren't doing them anymore. So, um, so that was really great. So in any case, I was raised with all the doilies and the tea cozies and you know, all the blankets and everything, sweaters and um, my mother was a seamstress so she um, she's she's so clo tailored clothing um, really beautiful clothing but um, I graduated and um, not too long afterwards my mother got ill and when she uh, was in um, when she was in the hospital and going to the doctors um, I found that we needed something to make sure that she was still the parent in the relationship because at that point I had really taken over. So I grabbed all of her unfinished needlework projects from the closet and it was a lot of unfinished needlework projects. And she would teach me while we were in the waiting room. And um, I relearned it and, and fell in love with it and then, um, and then translated it. It took several years to figure out how to go from painting. So I was sewing into the paintings and I was um, adding, sewing things into the paintings, and then um, some, at some point, and I can't really pinpoint when that was, I looked up and there was no painting. <laughs> it was just all sewing. <laughs> and so that's um, where all these came in. So, but I was very interested mainly, um, so how do I come to these round shapes and symmetrical shapes and these particular materials is that I camped out near public library as often as I could, and I started researching how people remember, and traditions in, in culture, and, and just like from weddings, like all those rituals that we do sort of without thinking, like how, you know, you're getting married, this is what you do, you're getting, you know, you're having a child, this is what you do, this is, um, or you're in different religions, like what do you do for when someone dies? So I actually took a class at the um, synagogue on 66th Street and 5th Avenue, um, and that was really interesting. Um, a lot of reference to dirt, which as you see, I use some dirt in my work too. Um, and I was interested in the similarity, like um, the place that we share. So with mandalas, the Navajos, use something very similar, rose windows are very similar, rosary beads are very similar, the Himalayan and um, the, um, the mandalas from the Eastern, 
religions are very similar, and that's what I was interested in.